Hello folks, Matthew Peterson here. Welcome to the next episode of Power Platform for Educators where we're going to continue on with co-pilots inside of Teams. And in this episode, we're going to learn how we can use entities, what are entities even used for, and what's going to make that do to our conversation. And really what it's going to do is help the conversation go quicker and give our users answers in a much faster pace. So without any further ado, let's see how we go get it done. Before we begin, if you are interested in learning more about the Power Platform, please go to prag.work slash map40 where you will get 40% off off our on-demand learning subscription, which has access to over a hundred different courses. Let's get on to the video. All right, so as you can see, this is from my last video here where I had some uh, a topic about homework. So our students come in, they have a question about their homework. So I have some different trigger phrases to initiate it. I give them a nice message and then I ask them a question. Uh, which of these is related to your homework question? And in that last video, we did multiple choice options. So when the user goes and tests the copilot, they are going to get these option choices to answer from, and then they can type in their answers as well. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use a concept of what are called entities. What entities are used to do is the copilot is going to parse out or get those key phrases and words that we have predefined for the copilot itself. And this is hopefully going to make the, the user interaction a, lot, a little bit nicer. And we're going to see that if we use entities, that we can have it not ask the question if the copilot thinks it already has the appropriate response. So rather than saying, hey, which of these is related to your homework question? Well, what if they already put in, I have late homework? Well, there's no need to ask them, well, what's your question about homework? Because they've already told us what that question is or what that answer response is. So if you're like, ah, it's not quite making sense, let's see it here in action. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the left-hand side of my copilot I'm going to head on over into entities. Now, as you can see, there are already some predefined entities in every copilot, things like cities, dates and times, emails, and so on. And what those are used for is let's say I used, for example, the email entity. So if in the copilot itself, I ask the question, what is your email address? And they type in my email is yada, yada, yada. Well, if I'm going to use that email whatever it is to maybe kick off a Power Automate flow and send an email with some important information. If the user typed in my email is, and then the email address, if we try to put all of that into the email, it's not gonna work. We just want that key email phrase from it. Uh, so that's the idea of what these predefined entities are. There's a whole bunch here, but what we're gonna do is we are going to make our own entity. So from here, what I'm gonna come on to, to the top here is click on new entity. And then for this one, we are going to use a closed list entity here. And so I'm going to give my entity uh, a name. I'm just going to call it something like homework responses. Yeah, responses. And again, this is just for us internally. The user does not see this. And then we can add a description if we wanted to. And then I'm just going to put in some ideas. I'm going to go, well, we have the late homework idea. So I'll add that in. We have how do I turn in homework? So I'm going to say turn in homework and then finally I'm going to say absent homework and I'm going to add those in. Now when we add in these entities over here on the left you have smart matching uh, and what smart matching does is it, it, it kind of broadens the scope. It says okay if we turn on smart matching we're going to look for words with similar meanings. We're going to look for grammar variations and misspellings so if they don't type it in exactly but they think it's a close enough match they're going to match it here. Now to expand that scope even further, what we can do is we can add synonyms into it. All right, so I'm gonna add in a crazy synonym here that doesn't make sense just to show you uh, how it works in the back end when we start to test. So I'm gonna add in a synonym and I'm just gonna call it uh, crazy homework. All right, something like I said, gonna add something in crazy here. So I'm gonna add it in and I'm gonna hit done. Now this is the entity list so now I'm gonna save it. Now this entity list can be used with any of our topics. It's not uh, just going to be used for only one topic. You can use them across multiple topics if you want to. So now that this entity has been saved, I'm gonna close out of here. There it goes, it just took a while to save. So I'm gonna close out, there's my homework responses. And I'm gonna head back on over to my topics and go back into my homework policy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this ask a question. So it was originally set up to identify as a multiple choice response. Well, now what I want to do is instead of a multiple choice response, I'm going to use my homework policy entity. So I'm going to come on over here and I called it my homework responses. And then I'm going to choose that. 
Now, once I choose that, now these other conditions, they're not really quite matching up exactly right because they're using multiple choices from my earlier topic. So I'm just going to come on over. Let me make sure I map these out correctly. So this one was the message for late homework. So I'm going to choose late. This one was for the turn in homework. And then finally, this one was for my absent homework. And I'm going to save this to start off with so I don't have to come back and do that again. And then when we use an entity, we do have the ability to put in the options for the user if we want to. So if we want to show them so it still looks like multiple choice and they can click on it, uh, we can use that option if we want, but we don't have to. So when you have a really large entity list, probably showing the options isn't going to be the best ideal. You know, if you have 10, 15, 20 different ideas, and that's where entities are really useful because we're good in free responses where uh, we have lots of things that users can pick from, but we don't want to display every single one. So I'm not going to put in the options here. So once I have this done, let's take a look at how this works in action. So I'm going to start off with the basic trigger phrase, just homework policy. So I'm going to come on over here, test my bot, and I'm just going to type in here and I'll do my tracking between topics because I like to know what topic I'm currently initiated in when I'm testing. So I'll just start off with hello to begin with. And then it says, all right, we're going to take you to your greeting topic. What can I help you with today? Again, you can modify this greeting topic uh, as well. I didn't modify it here. And I'm just going to type in homework policy. And we'll give it a second here. It says, okay, to help get you the information you need, which of these is related to your homework question? So again, this is where I would modify the question. I would say, what type of homework uh related question do you have? Um, but I didn't modify the question. So I'm just going to come on over and uh, I'll put in, you know, late work. So late work, even though it was late homework, let's see if smart matching is uh, smart enough to take us down the late work path. So I'm gonna put in late work here. Um, and not quite. All right. So let me put in late homework, type in late homework. And then for late homework, it did pick that up. So with that smart matching, again, this is where you're going to want to plan for, you know, smart matching is good. It broadens the scope, but it doesn't broaden it completely. So late work wasn't good enough. I bet if I type in, you know what, let's not bet here. Let me type in late homework with the misspelling. So I'm going to reset this here and I'm going to go back to, I'm not going to say hello this time. I'm just going to go homework policy. All right, and now I'm just going to say late homework without the O in between there. So I misspelled it on purpose and it was smart enough to figure that out. So that spelling variation or misspelling, it was smart enough to figure it out. So this is one use case of an entity, right? We started off, we typed in what it was, and then it's taking us down the right path. Now, let me show you the other really great feature about this where, you know, if they put in the trigger, hey, I have late homework questions. Is it going to be smart enough to go, you know what? Well, I don't even have to ask you that question because you're using an entity. And I saw in this earlier phrase that you have referenced an entity. So I already have that value for you. And I'm just going to take you down the next path that we should logically go down. So let's try it out here and see what we can come up with. Um, also here, if I click on variables, so I'll click variables right here. And we can see that you can always check out the variables that you are currently in. Now, because I'm in my end of conversation, we don't see the variable that was collected here just a few moments ago, but it did collect the, the phrase late homework. So now let me reset this. And this time I'm just going to start off with, I have late homework. All right. So I have late homework. Give it a second to go. And notice what it did not do that time. This time it didn't go to the question and say, what is your homework related question? Because it skipped it. It said, oh, I've already got your answer here. So I don't have to ask you that question. Now, some people might say, well, what if I do want to ask that question? Well, we can change the setting and say, always ask the question. If we think that an entity might be referenced earlier, and we don't want to use it down the road. We want to make sure we get the extra confirmation that can be done. But let's see about that synonym here. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to type in, I have a question about my crazy homework. And then I'm going to send this off. 
And notice, crazy homework. So even though I didn't use late homework, I used crazy because I did crazy as one of those, or crazy homework as one of those synonyms, and so it matched it up picture perfect with it. So with entities, <clears throat> this is one use case of it. Now, another use case could be maybe you need a number to be extracted. Uh, but what if your user who puts in the number writes it out in words and you want the numerical value because maybe you're going to do a conditional check. If the number is over 50, do this. If the number is 50 or under, then we need to do this part of the conversation. So a number entity would allow for that natural language of writing and then choose it. And we have the same thing like with money. We say, how much money did you spend on your last grocery bill? They put in the dollar sign in 3.20. Well, if we have a condition that's based on the money they spent, we go one way or the other. That money sign wouldn't work in the conditional check because we'd have to use a number. So the money entity would remove the numerical, the, the currency symbol, and just store 3.20. Or if they typed in 200 bucks, it would just store 200 as the number. So entities can be quite beneficial. Uh, typically, I'll use entities for when I want the conversation to go faster, if I think they're going to give me that information before they get to the question, or if I have a really large list of ideas. Multiple choice is just too much to show there. And if I think my users, you know, are knowing what they're talking about, you know, out of these different options, let's go up with the entity idea instead. So hopefully this is something that might benefit some of your co-pilots that you're creating in the classroom for your students or for your teachers or colleagues at your school. Uh, and if that's the case, stay tuned for more episodes in our Power Platform for Educators, and I'll see you in the next one.